Okay, good morning and uh, welcome to class. Uh, can somebody lead us in prayer, please, before we begin? Can anyone lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am, sir. Thank you, Kiran. Father, we just come before your throne once again, Father God. Father God, we want to just say thanking you, Father God, for your presence, for your calling, and for your that new subject, Father God. And thanking you for all subjects, Father God, who joined today, Father God. And thanking you for Selena, ma'am, Father God. And bless to everyone, Father God, that we can uh, learn, Father God, to new new thing, Father God, today. Praise, thank Father God. Bless and keep uh, your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that, that we can receive the word, Father God, which we are going to learn today, Father God, and apply to your kingdom, Paul. Bless us, Father God. Take care of upcoming time, Father God. Thanking you. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, in this course, we will be looking at uh, four... Uh, uh, books or three epistles, one person letter. Uh, do you know which are the books that we are looking at in this course? Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Yes, first and thank you, Prince. First and second Timothy, Titus, and um, uh, Philemon. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you've read these books before. So when you have read First Timothy, Second Timothy, uh, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Ma'am, later, Pastor Paul is wrote later for the church and believers. Okay, thank you, Kiran. So, uh, Apostle Paul is writing this letter to Timothy um, and to the church, okay? Guidelines for young leaders. Yes, thank you, Kannan. Why do you say young leaders? Why young leaders? Not Why not older leaders? Maybe you're saying it because Timothy was young. Okay. What else comes to your mind when you think about First Timothy? Any deep truth, any um, theological truth that you have gathered, you've understood, that comes back to your mind about First Timothy? Nothing? Okay, so um, we look at uh, these three epistles, uh, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus, which are called pastoral epistles because they are pastoral in nature, talking about pastoral work. And then we look at also uh, the personal letter of Apostle Paul to uh, you know, uh, Philemon. Uh, and so we'll uh, look at the book of uh, Philemon. Okay, um, now... We'll not, we look at uh, the first uh, the first book that we'll be looking at is First Timothy. Uh, so let's just look at uh, the background uh, to these um, uh, epistles that uh, Paul has written. Okay, um, so during his uh, first missionary journey, okay, Paul along with Barnabas uh, traveled through the regions of Galatia and the three cities of Iconium, Lystra, and Derby, And even as uh, Paul and Barnabas went around uh, this, this uh, region of Galatia and these uh, cities of Iconium, Lystra, and Derby, uh, you know, um, they established uh, churches, they strengthened the churches there and uh, the leadership there, okay? Now, during Paul's second uh, missionary journey, which... Uh, took about three years. Uh, during this time, Paul and uh, his team of uh, comprising of various people, okay, they went to several places in Asia Minor and Europe and established many local churches. And when Paul came to the region of Galatia, that is the cities of uh, Derby and Lystra, uh, you know, Paul uh, noticed 
Timothy. That's when he saw Timothy and um, uh, maybe he sensed that Timothy has, um, you know, uh, good leadership skills, uh, you know, uh, strong in the faith uh, and can be built up in the faith and good for ministry. So he had Timothy join uh, his team. Uh, now, what do you know about Timothy? Anything that comes to your mind when you think about uh, Timothy? Who was Timothy? No? Okay, so uh, when Timothy joined Paul, he was a very, very young uh, man. He was uh, only 17 years old at that time. And, uh, you know, Timothy's father was Greek and his mother was uh, Jewish. And so uh, because his father was Greek, you know, and um, this would cause a hindrance for Timothy to minister uh, 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 in the churches and also because of these Jewish believers who will kind of oppose him, he had Timothy circumcised so that, uh, you know, he could minister uh, even among the Jews. So this was about AD 49 and the Timothy travels and ministers with Paul uh, ever since uh, this time, okay? Now, um, during Paul's second missionary journey, uh, he, you know, uh, stops at uh, the city of Ephesus. Uh, we read this in Acts chapter 18, verses 18 to 10. And, uh, you know, Paul preached in the synagogue at Ephesus, uh, but he did not stay there for a, a very long time uh, because of his plan to reach Jerusalem. So he leaves this couple, Aquila and Priscilla, uh, in Ephesus to look oversee the church at Ephesus, and then he moves on to uh, Jerusalem. And this we read in Acts chapter 18, verse 19. Now, during Paul's third missionary journey, he came to the city of Ephesus, where he spent uh, three years uh, and most of his time on, uh, you know, his third missionary journey was spent here in this uh, city of Ephesus. And, uh, you know, Paul preached in the synagogue for three months. We read about this in Acts chapter 19, verse 8. And then because there was a lot of opposition and uh, problems, he quietly moved out from there and uh, he went to this hall called Tyrannus or Tyrannus in Ephesus and um, he uh, taught in this hall uh, for two years and um, many who were trained, many young people, older people who were trained in this uh, so-called like a Bible college in this Tyrannus Hall or Tyrannus Hall, you know, when they went out, they spread the gospel throughout uh, 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 the areas across uh, all of Asia. Okay, and as a result, we see uh, many churches coming, uh, rising up in Asia, and this is, uh, uh, you know, these churches we read about in uh, Revelation chapter two and three, uh, the church at Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Titeria, Sardis, Philadelphia, and uh, Laodicea. Um, so we read about these seven churches in uh, Revelation chapter two and uh, three. And um, all of these churches were in this uh, region um, and uh, have been established during uh, this time. You know, while Paul was teaching in this or uh, lecturing, giving lectures in this uh, hall of Tyrannus, his co-workers and others who were evangelized uh, in this uh, so-called uh, Bible college or in this, who are part of this teaching in this uh, lectures in this hall, you know, they went out and they established God's work or they established uh, ch churches um, in other cities, okay? So that is what happened in Paul's third missionary uh, uh, journey. Okay. Now, the city of Ephesus uh, is a very important uh, city in uh, Asia Minor. It was one of uh, or the first and the greatest metropolis or one of the great important strategic um, uh, cities in Asia. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a well populous or well populated uh, uh, place, had almost uh, uh, 225,000 people. And this city of Ephesus was very famous for something. 
Does anyone know what it was famous for? What was the city of uh, Ephesus famous for? Anyone? Okay, it was famous for yeah, yes, they. Yes, it was famous for the Temple of Dinah. Thank you. So the Temple of Dinah was at Ephesus, and it was one of the largest uh, buildings that was existent at that time. And, uh, you know, it was also the seven wonders of the world at that time. And, uh, you know, it took 220 years to construct this uh, uh, temple, which was made of full marble. And the, uh, the way or the path leading to the temple was also, uh, you know, uh, paved with marble. And um, uh, in this temple was a statue of a multi-breasted goddess Dinah, uh, which people believe that, you know, fell from the sky. And we read about this in Acts chapter 19, verse 35. But in such a city where there's so much of um, uh, paganism, there's so much of uh, uh, idolatry and every kind of wrong things, we see that, you know, unusual miracles took place at uh, Ephesus. You can read about this in Acts chapter 19. Um, and uh, these unusual miracles, uh, you know, uh, took place through Paul when he was ministering there at Ephesus. And, um, and there was a great turning around you know, of people to the Lord, many accepted um, uh, Jesus. Um, and, you know, uh, one particular event caused a great turning around was when the seven sons of uh, Sceva, okay, the Jewish priest, um, were going around and, um, you know, um, uh, uh, casting out demons and when they went to one man's house and uh, they cast out demons the, the demons spoke back and said you know uh, Paul we know, Jesus we know but who are you and they beat up those uh, seven sons of Sceva really very badly black and blue and they were running out naked and when everybody saw this you know uh, this was a great uh, turning around for that city and uh, we know that you know um, uh, many turned away from witchcraft and black magic magic and uh, scrolls that was worth thousands of, uh, uh, of rupees and a lot of money were all burnt up. Um, so a strong work was established here in the city of um, Ephesus. Okay, And also the city of Ephesus was uh, a very important uh, place uh, in the ministry of um, uh, Paul because it was here that he trained many young leaders. Uh, so Petra, uh, um, Archist Aristarchus, um, who was from uh, Secondus of uh, Thessalonica, Gaius, uh, Timothy, who was from Lystra, Tychicus, Trophimus of Asia, uh, uh, Aristus from Corinth. Uh, he, it was also here that he meets Philemon and Epaphrasus, both of them who were from the city of Colossae. Um, and we know that the city of Colossae was like 100 miles away from east of Ephesus. And the church at uh, Colossae was established by Epaphras. Okay. And uh, we see that Timothy, uh, Titus, sorry, Titus was also part of this team that worked with Paul at Ephesus uh, during his time. So we see that during this time here, you know, not only there was a lot of unusual miracles that happened in Ephesus, there was not only a big turning around of um, uh, people uh, towards God and, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, there was not only um, a great uh, ministry that happened uh, where Paul was able to teach for three years, uh, but also we see that, you know, Paul was able to train uh, many young people, many young men uh, who are part of his team, who carried on his uh, uh, work and uh, who Paul also, you know, left behind in certain churches that he started or he went to build up those churches. He left these young men. And so these uh, young men were uh, well trained by Paul here in Ephesus. So all of these people who I mentioned, so Peter, uh, Aristarchus, uh, Secondus, uh, Gaius, Timothy, Tychicus, Trophimus, Arist uh, Aristarchus, uh, Philemon, Epaphras, all of them were here and all of them, you know, were part of uh, Paul's team and continues to work um, uh, even after uh, he was uh, 
martyred. Okay. Um, and so we see that all of these leaders and elders and overseers, you know, became shepherds of, um, uh, uh, of churches, of believers at Ephesus. Later on, towards the end of his third missionary journey on his way to Jerusalem, uh, you know, Paul met with the elders at the church of Ephesus at a place called Miletus. We read about this in Acts chapter 20. And here Paul delivered a powerful message to the elders of the uh, church. Okay. After his third missionary journey, um, uh, Paul goes to visit Jerusalem. And there he's imprisoned uh, in Caesarea for about two years. And then he's taken to Rome and he's imprisoned there for another two years. Okay. Uh, now, P Timothy was also with Paul during his um, the time that he was uh, imprisoned in Rome. And it was during this time of Roman imprisonment that Paul wrote uh, his prison epistles, that is Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, and uh, Philemon. Okay. Um, now, Paul's letter to Timothy. Um, now, after Paul was, uh, when did Paul write his letter to Timothy? After Paul is released from his first Roman imprisonment, that is somewhere between AD 63 to AD 67. He and Titus uh, worked for some time in Crete. Uh, and after this, Paul, um, you know, had to uh, move on from Crete. So he leaves Titus there in Crete uh, to continue the work. Okay, uh, and it's possible that Paul may have traveled with Timothy to Ephesus at this time. So after he left uh, Titus at Crete, it's possible that he traveled to the city of Ephesus um, with Timothy. And, um, you know, he left Timothy to oversee the work at um, Ephesus. Okay, and then Paul goes on to uh, a place called Macedonia. Now, why were we looking at this whole um, missionary journey is to see, you know, how um, Paul meets Timothy and Titus and, um, uh, you know, how they journeyed with him and how they, uh, why Paul writes this letter to uh, Titus, why he writes this letter to Timothy is because after his Roman imprisonment, he goes to Crete. He sees a need for a good leader to establish the work there, to help in correcting the doctrines, to help and protect the church from false teachers. And also when he goes to Ephesus, he notices the same thing there. And so he leaves um, uh, Timothy uh, because he has to go on, move on to uh, Macedonia to continue the work at uh, and the other places. So he leaves Timothy at this very, very important city of um, Ephesus. And uh, Paul writes first Timothy and uh, Titus during this time when he was most likely in Macedonia. So we know that he went to Crete, he went to Ephesus. So at Crete, he left Titus. At um, Ephesus, he left um, Timothy. And then he goes on to Macedonia. And then maybe he felt a need to encourage Titus and uh, uh, Timothy. So he writes a letter for, for Macedonia, not only to encourage them, but how to go about uh, church administration, uh, what they have to do. And maybe he has heard reports of things that are happening there from Titus and Timothy. So he uh, writes this letter of First Timothy and Titus. Okay. Now, before we end this uh, introduction and look at uh, the first chapter, First Timothy, let's look at um, Paul's second Roman imprisonment. Um, now, once Paul uh, returns to Rome, he was imprisoned again. And uh, that's when he writes his last epistle of Second uh, Timothy. Okay. So uh, just a brief introduction about Timothy. Uh, we already saw quite a lot of uh, details about him. Uh, Timothy served alongside Paul for about 18 years from AD 49 to AD 67. And Timothy at this point may have been about 34 years old uh, when he was put in charge of uh, the church at Ephesus. Um, and the church in Ephesus um, uh, was not just one church, but uh, it may have had many house churches, but it was also the spiritual headquarters for the other seven churches. Remember, I mentioned the 
seven churches that were are mentioned in Revelation chapter two and chapter three, the uh, the churches at the Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and uh, Laodicea. Okay, so we see that uh, this young uh, uh, man Timothy had a lot of responsibilities to shoulder. Okay, so it was not just one church, a uh, house, few house churches, but there was also these seven churches, uh, and there was a huge responsibility uh, that was laid on uh, Timothy's uh, shoulder. And so, First Timothy was written about sixty, about eighty sixty seven from Macedonia to Timothy to um, encourage him and to give him more guidelines on how to go about. Uh, church-related uh, administration, uh, how to correct uh, the wrong doctrines and what to do in those situations, in the difficult situations when the church was being faced with false doctrines and false teachers, okay? So if you can unmute your mics and um, let me know if you were able to understand the introduction, if there's any doubts, do you have any comments, anything you'd like to say? Nothing? Okay. So Dave says it's all fine. So we're able to understand the basic um, uh, historical cult background, the socio-cultural background of uh, Ephesus and uh, the place that uh, Timothy was working and uh, the churches he was overseeing from uh, the city of Ephesus. Okay. Okay, so if there are no doubts and no questions, let's turn to First Timothy. Okay, if you can turn in your Bibles to First Timothy, chapter one. First Timothy chapter one. And I request uh, somebody to um Maybe read because we have around um, 20 verses. So if um, each of us can read five, five, or maybe six verses each, be good. So can somebody begin, please? First Timothy chapter one. And even as we read this, I would like you all to, uh, you know, uh, just ask the Holy Spirit to speak uh, to you. Maybe if you found some words that just kind of brought back uh, some, uh, you know, uh, meaning, uh, something that you've heard before, something that you studied before, but it brought something, uh, a memory back to you or something that really stirred up your heart. Um, some words that really stood out for you, I'll ask you after we read First Timothy and you can share that. Okay, so can somebody read verses 1 to verse 6, please? Go ahead, Pratim. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, to Timothy, a true son in the faith, Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may change, you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some having strayed have turned aside to other talk. Thank you, Dave. So can somebody read maybe from 7 onwards, 7 to 12? Yes, For God has not given us a spirit of fear but power 
and of love and of the sound mind therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our lord nor you're reading first timothy me. kiran sorry to interrupt you're reading first timothy Sorry, yeah. chapter 1 verse 7 yeah desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm but we know that the law is good, good if one uses a law fully knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous person but for the lawless and un Subordinate for the ungodly and for sinners and and the unholy and profanes for murderers of fathers and the murderers of the mother for men slayers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Thank for uh, fornicators for sodomites for kidnappers for liars for perjurers and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine according to the blessed god which was committed to my trust and i thank christ jesus our lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into this to the ministry although i was formerly a blasphemer a persecutor and an in you know insolent man insolent. but i insolent obtained man. mercy insolent man but i obtained mercy because i i did it ignorant ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of the lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in christ jesus this faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i am if however for this reason i obtain mercy that is that in me first jesus christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going on him for everlasting life now to the king eternal immortal invisible to god who alone is wise be honor and glory forever and ever amen this is Uh, this charge i commit to you san timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare having faith and good conscience which some having rejected concerning the faith have uh, suffered shipwreck shipwreck of whom are himanesis and alexander whom i delivered to satan that they may learn not to blaspheme okay thank you uh, i just like you all to share one thing that really uh, stood out for you uh, in this uh, in this chapter first timothy chapter 1 which you just read now something that really stood out something that came back uh, to your memory something that you learned sometime back um, something that god has stirred up your heart or something the holy spirit just reiterated to you this morning so would uh, each of us just take a minute to just share please and then we'll move on you know not always paul sorry tom says yes, go ahead here in verse 12 paul saying i thank christ jesus our lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry so uh, being in the ministry it, it, it's so privileged and uh, god is considering uh, paul as a faithful at, at the same i believe uh, those doing the ministry god is considering he as a faithful we have the responsibility to continue walk in the faithfulness of god and faith we have to be faithful that word stood with me thank you thomas yes that uh, god counted um, uh, paul faithful he counts us faithful even as we um, do the ministry but uh, something that i really like what he said was we need to continue to be uh, faithful to what god has called us and what he has entrusted to us thank you yes dave 
<laughs> Even me, I was also about to say that the rest of us. Uh, Dave, can you increase your volume, please? Um, give me a second. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, so I was also about to share the first 12. Well, I will go up to 13 as well. Uh, since um, Thomas already shared that, yeah, when Paul, uh, if you look at his background, uh, it reminded me that God doesn't look at uh, what our life has gone through. Because um, Paul was a very, uh, he was a blasphemer and a persecutor. And he, he persecuted so many um, uh, disciples of Christ, but yet God used him in such a mighty way that we can even comprehend how God chose him and took, uh, took him from that person and changed him to a different person. So, for God's ministry, for someone to work for God, he doesn't he is without prejudice. Uh, he he can use anyone, any of us, for his kingdom, and he can, he can change any of our life. Uh, for God to work in us and to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, though it was a little faint, I couldn't uh, uh, get a few uh, uh, sentences that you said, but you were basically saying that even though, you know, um, uh, uh, Paul was a persecutor, a blasphemer, and he persecuted uh, the people, the, uh, the church, the early church, and killed many people, you know, but still God was merciful to him, and, um, you know, uh, and God uh, transformed his life and used him mightily, right? That is what you were basically saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry okay. about the sound quality. No, no, no worries. Anyone else la would like to share? Uh, Prince? Yes, ma'am. 15, yes. 15 and 16. Mm -hmm. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. it. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. Here is um, the Paul is. Uh, no, just showing example for himself and 16 but god had mercy on me so jesus christ could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinner then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life there is uh, paul uh, is something he's just showing the uh, i i am all I am also sinner and all like that, and he is just showing the being an example, being example to like uh, come to throne of God and okay. yeah. Okay, so Paul is saying that he was a sinner, but uh, you know, uh, even as he came to the throne of God, and you know, I mean, Jesus uh, saved him and transformed his life. Okay, thank you. What about Prince Kanan Erin? Anything you'd like to share? Yeah, ma'am. Mm. Yes. We must have the good fight of faith. Uh, here Paul's uh, focusing on uh, two persons, uh, Hermonius and Alexander. They are fall from the, their faith uh, because they didn't obey the God. We need to depend on the Holy Spirit. So uh, Holy Spirit can hold us on his faith. Thank you. So he's, um, uh, Prince is uh, sharing about verse 19 and 20, how um, Hymenius and Alexander, though they were in the faith, how they uh, their faith was shipwrecked and how they fell away the, from their faith. And so he's saying as he's, um, he, he was encouraged by this thought that, you know, we need to uh, be steadfast in our faith, strong in our faith, um, and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and to um, help us. Thank you. What about Arun and Kanan? Uh, yes, ma'am. The um, verse 14, right? In that one, uh, we can see the grace of the Lord that uh, through Jesus Christ. Um, how we having our uh, 
grace through Jesus from the Lord. Okay. So we in Christ Jesus we receive abundance of uh, grace and we receive abundance of uh, love uh, when we have our, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you. So you're saying that when we put our faith in Jesus Christ we receive abundance of um, uh, grace and love. Yeah, Erin. Hello. Yes, we can, yeah. Yeah, um, this chapter, uh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Erin. It's okay, no worries. If you have connectivity problems, no problem. Okay, uh, so thank you all for sharing. Um, uh, we we'll, we we'll look at um, each verse, phrase, and we'll do a deeper study of each uh, uh, verse, phrase, word uh, in this first chapter. So let's look at verses 1 to 4. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, to Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord. As I urged you then when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which causes disputes rather than godly edification which is in uh, faith. Okay, so here Paul is uh, calling himself, what is he calling himself as here in verse uh, 1? What does Paul call himself as? He calls himself as an apostle. Yes. Who is an apostle? The sent one. Yes. An apostle is a, uh, apostle means sent one. And uh, in terms of um, uh, function is one who goes ahead and pioneers to advance the kingdom of God. That means goes ahead uh, and does things which no one else has done before or maybe it's not there in that specific geographical area or that territory or that place. So they pioneer something new uh, to advance the kingdom of God. And so here Paul is saying he's an apostle of Jesus Christ and uh, you know he does not give himself uh, this designation and call himself as an apostle but he says he's an apostle uh, by the commandment of God so he's calling his uh, his uh, 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 you know he's saying that his calling is a command from uh, God and so we need to remember that even when God calls us into ministry it's not something that is just a privilege that we can enjoy of a specific status or a specific role or responsibility but it is a, a command it's a, a responsibility that we need to fulfill a command by God okay in verses um, one and two he's uh, you know he's talking about the trinity okay he's talking about God he's talking about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ Okay, and so here Paul mentions two persons of the Godhead. Uh, we believe in God the Father, we believe in God the Son, we believe in God the Holy Spirit. So here uh, Paul says in verse 1 and 2, God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and in verse 2 he says, God as, uh, sorry, in verse 1 he says, God our Savior. And in verse 2 he says, uh, God the Father and Jesus Christ our uh, Lord. Okay, so it's good to recognize who God is and all that He means to uh, us. So here He's in these two verses, He's calling God as Savior. Okay, and uh, He's talking about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and He's talking about God as our Savior, He's talking about God as our Father, and uh, He's uh, also talking about the hope. Uh, and uh, that we have in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, okay? So Jesus Christ is our Savior. He's our Father. He's our hope. Uh, he's our Lord, our healer, our deliverer, and our 
um, provider. So, uh, you know, Paul is actually stating who God uh, and what God means to him and also what uh, and whom the Lord Jesus Christ means to him. Okay. In verses three and four, uh, Paul uh, is saying, telling Timothy, as I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they may teach no other doctrine. Okay. So uh, he's, uh, as I mentioned, you know, he left Timothy at Ephesus and he gave him the charge over the church at Ephesus and then uh, the churches uh, surrounding uh, the region, the surrounding regions there at um, uh, in uh, around Ephesus. Okay. And he tells them and he tells them. Um, Timothy and gives him this charge that you know to make sure that no other doctrine is uh, taught in these churches and he's telling him do not give heed uh, to you know any false doctrines and what are these false doctrines these false doctrines are uh, fables and endless uh, genealogies okay so um, uh, what are these fables? These fables are basically Jewish um, uh, stories that are not true, you know, uh, of Old Testament about Abraham, the patriarchs, uh, that people have, the Jews have just made up and, you know, it's just been circulating around uh, the years, these stories, and they're bringing these Jewish fables uh, into the uh, church. And um, also uh, these endless genealogies is also, you know, they're adding in more um, uh, genealogical uh, uh, data or, um, uh, you know, people into the genealogy of the patriarchs, and it's causing a lot of confusion. And the other um, false doctrines that was being uh, you know, uh, circulating or prevailing in, in the churches uh, during Paul's time was this whole uh, idea about Gnosticism. Okay. And uh, Gnosticism, in, they believe that, um, you know, matter and the physical body is evil. Uh, and God did not create this world because this world is evil and God cannot create um, uh, anything that is evil. And because our body is evil, they deny that, you know, Jesus uh, uh, came in the flesh or he died in the flesh. Um, and uh, so he, uh, you know, these Gnostics go around saying that there is a, a demigod or a, a secondary god. Um, and so all of these false teachings were circulating in the church and causing a lot of uh, confusion and uh, chaos. So um, Paul is telling Timothy that, you know, he needs to uh, watch out very carefully uh, what is being taught, what is the doctrines being taught to the people and what are people called to focus on, okay? And he's saying, do away with all of these uh, uh, fables and endless genealogies. He says, tell the people not to listen to them, not to give ear to these things. Uh, you know, why? What is the end result of this? He's saying all of these things is going to cause a lot of uh, uh, dispute. That is going to cause a lot of strife and uh, division. So, uh, you know, when we also in the world that we're living in today, there's a lot of false teachings, a lot of false doctrines that are circulating. And um, we need to also be aware of what is being taught um, and, uh, you know, correct and go back to scripture and see what is the truth and defend uh, these false teachings and uh, false doctrines um, and teach the right thing to the people. Uh, and it's also important to, to, uh, to note here that, you know, when false teachings and doctrines enter the church, it's going to cause a lot of strife and it's going to cause a lot of uh, division. But if sound teaching is uh, being taught, then there's going to be a godly edification in the faith. That is what Paul says here. See, in verse um, uh, 4, he says, you know, uh, don't give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in 
um, faith. So if you want to really make sure that a church is, you know, uh, teaching the right kind of doctrines, and that is the truth, then it will show by its fruit. And what is the fruit that is going to be caused there? There's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of strife and division. But if there is a right teaching, uh, right doctrines being taught that, you know, it will edify people, bring about godly edification in the faith, and it will build up people in the faith. It will build up believers in the faith. Okay. Now we see that this was not only a problem in the church at Ephesus where Paul leaves uh, uh, Timothy, but um, towards the end of his third missionary journey, Paul already had warned uh, the leaders at the church at Ephesus. And this was nine years before he wrote First Timothy. So nine years before itself, you know, Paul has warned the leaders and the elders of the church at Ephesus. And this is what we read in Acts chapter 20, verses uh, 28 to 32. It says, therefore, take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers uh, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourself, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are uh, sanctified. Okay, so we see that Paul is already telling the church at Ephesus, this is nine years before he writes First Timothy, and he's telling them that, you know, a savage wolves, uh, will come among you, okay? They will come from outside. So he's talking about false teachers and doctrines who are uh, circulating these false teachings about Gnosticism. And it's not only uh, false teachers from outside, but also within the church, some of these uh, Jews who have become uh, believers in Jesus Christ, they are still, you know, bringing about the circumcision ritual. They're talking about uh, how they need to follow various sacrifices and keep uh, various observances of the law and um, uh, also spreading around these Jewish fables and genealogies, uh, which is causing a lot of confusion in the uh, church. So we see that this was basically a problem, not only in the church's deficits, but also the uh, uh, region surrounding that and, uh, uh, you know, uh, all of Europe and Asia Minor and wherever Paul was ministering. Um, we see that uh, Paul later on in his epistle to the Ephesians when he was imprisoned in Rome in AD 63, he wanted believers to be built so that he says in, in, in the book of Ephesians that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, which he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. So he says, you know, uh, don't uh, we should not be uh, no longer be children who are tossed to and fro, carried away with every wrong teaching, but we need to be founded in the uh, truth. And so here he is um, uh, encouraging Timothy to tell the people and himself not to give heed to all of these uh, false teachings, false teachers, and doctrines, but to focus on the truth. Uh, that is in God's word and to preach and teach it and also telling people not to give ear to these false teachings. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll take a break and uh, we'll come back after the break.